Hello from me and Ellie. Ellie is here today. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about when the writing stalls out and ways an intuitive writer can deal with it. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, draw up a chair, or have a seat, and subscribe to the channel and like this video, and we'll get started on it right away. Yes, ma'am. So yeah, I've, I've been a little stalled out, I think. Now, stalling out is not the same as burnout. <sighs> stalling out can happen for a number of reasons. Now, stalling out is not the same as burnout. I'm not going to go into burnout because I'm not the best person to deal with that. I've been in burnout, severe burnout once with my writing. And that required months of getting myself back to where I could approach the computer again. Uh, I will tell you that story someday if you're interested in it. I think I've touched on it in other videos, but um, I, can, I can do a video just about that period of time. Oh, she's so cute. She's so cute. The kittens have been keeping us very busy and keeping us smiling. I miss my Kaylee so much, but it's so nice to have another kitten or two to join my videos. Mr. Apple is curled up asleep on the bed right now, or he would be here too. Anyway, so yeah, my writing stalled out. That doesn't mean I have writer's block. What it means for me, and I'm pretty sure this is the basic reason, um, the past two months have been stressful, extremely stressful, very emotional, uh, <laughs> to the point of where all I wanted to do is sit here and play games and watch videos and do nothing because my brain did not want to work. My brain did not want to think. We don't chew on hair because mommy's hair is colored. Mommy's hair has died, and that's probably not a good thing for you. Um, she has the longest whiskers. Look at that. Look at those whiskers. Anyway, so this started actually back in July when we lost Morgan, and I had a three or four week period where I was extremely worried about a dear family member and I had devoted so much time to my worries. <laughs> Pickles. I devoted so much time to my worries that I lost time writing and I couldn't focus. And with Morgan's death, it was, it just sort of capped it off. It's like, oh my God, everything's falling apart. And then all of staying home and not being able to go out anywhere, you know, in the past two and a half years, the past two, two years have been a trying experience for a lot of people. And for those of us who are severely immune compromised, it has, it has been hard having people bluntly come out and tell me that my health doesn't matter because they do not want to wear a mask. So it's fine if I die. You know, not so friendly and not so likely to make them someone I care to interact with or even care if they're around. I, yeah, I had that happen. I, I got sort of overrun by trolls on Twitter when I happened to start talking about how, you know, we, we need to look after each other in this world. And that tells me just how much people care about other people. And I'm not saying everybody's that way. I know they aren't. But when you get an onslaught like that, it can feel like that. Anyway, so starting last July, things got really, really rough. And I was just finding my way out of the maze when... December hit. And so, yeah, I had 
we lost Kaylee unexpectedly. And I was running behind anyway. So I was stressed about that. And then I had the COVID scare. You know, it's like, oh my God, so am I going to get COVID? Um, somebody play? Do you want to go play? So, you know, I think my mind just needed to salute. I think my mind just needed to uh, shut down for a while. And it did. And I played Valheim. And that's about all I wanted to do is play Valheim and watch TV. So I got myself fully behind. And now I'm struggling to get done in time. It does not mean, again, it does not mean I'm not interested in the book. It does not mean that I don't love what I'm writing. What I did was get overwhelmed and didn't have the appropriate support system put into place. I mean, I've got supportive friends, my husband's supportive, but there's only so much they can do when you're feeling overwhelmed, you know, and I didn't. I didn't plan on going into a deep depression. So that's one reason why writing can overwhelm you, why your writing can stall out, is if you go into a depression, if you get overwhelmed and you don't have enough reserves to handle it. Sometimes it can stall out briefly when you're just not recharged enough. Not necessarily overwhelmed, but you spent too many nights writing XXX words per night, and all of a sudden you need a break. You need a day or two break, and suddenly the words aren't there. You know, it's nothing to worry about. It's simply you take a breath, you find something to recharge you, and then you get back to it. And like with the overwhelm that I felt, well, I'm now pulling back from it. I feel myself focusing again. I'm not nearly as tired as I was, but now I've got to scramble a bit and try to make sure that I don't let myself get overwhelmed again in the process. And another reason why your writing can stall out is that for intuitive writers, since we don't tend to plot or we plot very lightly, just an overreaching plot, of say half a page for me. Um, sometimes the story's not fully formed in your subconscious. Sometimes it's not ready to write. It can take longer to create something, even if you do it on a subconscious level, than you might think it would. Now, I another reason that plays into this because the poison forest, A, it's less urban fantasy, more fantasy. So different genre, kind of. May still be the wild hunt world, but it's slightly different genre. Brand new characters. I mean, yes, you see crossovers definitely in the book, but the main characters are new and I'm just getting to know them. And I didn't allow myself enough time for my subconscious to process what it needed to do. Because I realized last week I was writing a scene and all of a sudden I saw the series story arc for Storm, the main character. And I realized what it was. I, I suddenly got this vision of what the books will what story the books will tell. And this is not each individual book. For, for me, almost every series, not all, but almost, has an overreaching story arc. And then it will have a different story for each book that's wrapped up within each book. And the story arc plays out over the series while the books have their own story that plays out within the book. And I realized I hadn't seen the overreaching arc for the story yet for the entire series. And it just came to me and I realized I hadn't seen it before then because it hadn't processed. I think of my subconscious like a computer. The processes are going on in the background that keep it running, that keep things flowing, that process information and give it back to you in a form that you understand. 
And so, so I had not processed through the information yet that would tell me what this series, what the story of the series is about. And now I have it. And of course, the first book, yes, it plays into it, definitely. Um, but now I can write with that in the back of my conscious mind, and that helps too. So the writing is picking up. If your writing stalls out, ask yourself, where's the last place that it was flowing smoothly? Sometimes you will have taken a wrong turn and tried to force the story in a, in a path that shouldn't be going. When you look back, you might want to go, okay, you might ask yourself, okay, where did it stall out? And take away your preconceptions of what it should be and start writing and see if something new comes up that makes it flow. For instance, if you have a character and you try to force them to go through this one scene and it stalls out there, maybe they don't want to go through that scene. Maybe they need to do something else instead. So don't let your preconceptions of what you think should happen color the, the actual story that needs to happen. If you are overwhelmed, take some time to recharge because it's only going to get worse if you continue to try to push through when it's not there, when the energy is not there. I'm not talking about the muse. I'm talking about the actual just mental and emotional capacity to write at that point. And then again, like me, I wasn't burned out. I was overwhelmed. So I, need, I needed that time to just sit and do nothing, just goof around so that I could process all the emotional crap that had happened from July on. Um, you know, I had friends lose loved ones. I had friends get sick. Um, one of my dear friends has COVID for the second time and she's been vaccinated and she is immune compromised. And, you know, it is, it, this, this past couple of years has taken a toll on people. And a number of my friends have not been immune to that. And it's hard to sit back and go, I can't do anything except be there for them emotionally. Can't even go see them. And we can't discount the effect that has on our psyches. So, you know, the writing... When it stalls, it stalls for a reason. Maybe, possibly, it's not even the story you should be working on at this time. You might need to be writing something else. Maybe the story isn't ready to be written. And that's a very real truth. I don't care how well someone plots, <clears throat> whether they work on an intuitive level, if the story isn't ready in your subconscious if it isn't ready in your in your creative center inside of you then it's not going to come out the way it needs to come out so ask yourself am i ready to write this story am i overwhelmed do i need a break am i just in need of a day's recharge you know do i need to just take the day off and you know, do something fun and fill the well. Is the story even one that I'm supposed to be writing? For years, long before I wrote Urban Fantasy, when I was still unpublished, um, I thought I needed to write epic fantasy. Now I still would love to write epic fantasy. But I've come to realize that my voice is much better suited for urban fantasy and for fantasy like I'm writing in uh, the Hedge Dragon series. And for paranormal women's fiction, you know, sp ooh, spooky stuff. I am not suited towards writing contemporary romance. Sometimes I wish I was because it sells really well. But I think if I tried to write a contemporary romance, it would not 
be my best book um, because I'm just not geared that way. I like to read them, but I, I can't write them that well. I cannot write um, erotica. I can write good sex scenes, but I cannot write erotica. I cannot write Westerns. I don't read Westerns. I can't write Westerns. If you paid me to do one, it probably would be the most boring thing you'd ever read because I don't have the nature for it. So is the story one you need to be writing? Is it something that you just thought you should write or you wanted to write, but it isn't in your voice? Is that why it's stalling out? Are you afraid? Are you afraid of finding out that you won't be able to write it? Are you afraid of success? Are you afraid of failing? Are you afraid that you'll get bored? Um, fear can stall people. And it doesn't have to be just fear of failure. It can be fear of, well, if I really succeed at this, people will have more expectations of me in the future. If I succeed at this, will I box myself into a genre? If I succeed at this, will I be able to do it again? Will I be a fluke? A lot of beginning writers suffer from that especially writers who get their first book published and then they're like terrified. I remember I had written a lot by the time I got my first contract. I'd written books, but there was a part of me that was afraid I couldn't produce on demand to contract. And I sat there frozen, not for very long, but I sat there frozen going, oh my God, Will I be able to write two more books in this series with this character in the time frame they wanted it? Well, the answer was yes. But that fear is a very real um, blockage for some people. And one of the only ways I know out of that fear is to basically say the only way I'll find out is by trying and just do it. Just go through and start the second book and tell yourself, I can do this. I've done it once. I can do it again. You'd be surprised how many writers, even after numerous books, still feel like they're a fluke or like they're an imposter. It's called imposter syndrome. I do not have it, but a lot of writers do. And it's that feeling of like, everybody's gonna find out I'm a fake. And it doesn't matter how much time you have put into the work, hours and weeks and months, you can still feel like you're a fake. And the best answer I can give for that one again is, you know what? You've got proof that you're not a fake you wrote that first book and you may have published that first book, but even if you have written, but not published that first book, you're not a fake, you are a writer. As long as you write, and I'm not saying you have to write every day, but as long as you write, as long as you have written something, you are a writer. I think I'm just rambling now, but I hope that, I hope that this is helping you in some way. If you want a career in writing, you need to be able to, to ride the ship, you know, to go over the waves. Sometimes the sea is calm and the wind is behind you and it's smooth sailing and you are zipping across that ocean. And other times you got the perfect storm brewing and everything is swirling and there's a whirlpool and there is a wave topping over the boat. And you're staring at it going, will I ever come out from this wave? Well, generally, yeah, you will. It may take some time. You may end up crashing on some rocks. But as long as that passion is in your heart, you'll find a way out of it. And if that requires talking to a coach, talking to a writing coach, a life coach, if that requires therapy, that's fine. You're human. 
were people, were people who happened to be writers. Therefore, sometimes we will have failings. We will have things tank. Sorry for all the text notifications. I thought I put it on mute, but apparently I didn't. But, you know, you will have failings. You will have wrecks. You will have shipwrecks. You will go down under the water. Just take a deep breath. Come up again. Use what tools you need to help you get back to land and to build a new boat and set sail again. And you will have done so with all this experience behind you. And each time you have a crash, it will be a little bit easier. Maybe not a whole lot, but it will be a little bit easier. And there will be a little bit more surety inside of you going, okay, I can weather this. I weathered that. I can weather this. So I hope this pep talk helped. And I will talk to you next time. And uh, yeah, take care and yeah, have a great day. Bye.